Hey everyone and welcome to second part of this uh, mesh for the tornado. Uh, let's continue where we uh, left off. So as you can see this is what we've created in the part one and in part two we're gonna dive into creating swirls for that mesh. All right so let me create a null and in here I'm just gonna call it tornado. Cool. Next Oops, seems like I disabled that node. Uh, in here, I'm gonna get the group. I'm gonna select edges and I'm gonna call this group swirl, so maybe a loop. Okay, I'm gonna press this arrow. That's gonna allow me to select which edge I want. I'm gonna pick any, double click, and it's gonna go around this mesh and select all those uh, edges for me. I'm gonna press enter. As you can see, the points has been added here. If for some reason it's not working for you, I'll just delete anything you've got here. Press and do it again. So press the arrow, select the loop, double click, enter, and the points will be added to this uh, uh, to this field. All right, so I've got it here, I'll name it loop. And next I'm gonna get convert line. In here, I'm going to select that group. I'll be a loop, connect path, and remove unused points. And it's going to isolate that for me, which is exactly what I want. So I'm going to resample it. And for the resample, I'm going to go slightly crazy for the points, maybe 50, and make this subdivision curves as well. And I'm going to add some twist to it. So twist, I'm going to change the axis for the twist for the uh, Y axis. Let me try that twist now. You might go slightly higher for the length. So maybe 1.3 might work because I want this to cover the whole, um, the whole area. And uh, for the twist, I was trying to think if I should go more or not. I think I'm just going to um, actually, let me try a crazy number. Let me go for 1000. So I think this actually could work because I want this to go around a couple times um, around that tornado. And actually, let me get that tornado so I can preview it. Okay, so I'm going to get the merge node. And as you can see, it kind of follows it nicely. Okay, but I think I want this to go outside of the tornado. So before we actually add it to the loop, we can just get the uh, transform node here, plug it onto that group. And for the transform, see if we can maybe add some scale to it, like 1.2 and 1.2 on those two axes. And that should actually expand our tornado for that loop. So now if you're gonna select uh, this one here, should go a little bit outside of the edges. Let's see if we can actually add a slightly higher value at like 1.5 maybe. Cool, so now if I'm gonna preview those two merge version, you can see our swirl goes mostly outside of that tornado. Maybe not at the bottom, but I think it's okay. Unless we go, we can go to that twist maybe and capture the origin to be a point two. So that's going to straighten this a little bit, maybe. Let me see. Okay. Okay, the last bit maybe we could, because uh, we already got a twist, let's see if we can uh, now apply a sweep to it. So I'm going to get a sweep here. I'm going to select ribbon at the top. Okay, for the columns, I actually only want one in the middle. I'm going to go to uh, apply scale along curve. And in here, I'm just going to create one point in the middle. Oops. 
and I want this to be smooth as well. So I'm going to select it and change it to Bezier. Actually, all of them. That's going to create a nice swirl for me. However, it might not be displayed as I want. So if I preview both of the meshes, you can see that top bit is actually skewed a little bit. So what you could do, just go to roll and try to find a suitable roll for it. And I think something like this might be best. So if player viewing this from this angle, you can see I'll be seeing most of that swirl for the top down games. I think you want something like this and that could work as well. So now it might be a good idea to go here and play with the width if you need this to be uh, slightly thicker. I'm just going to go with a 0.2 and I think that will be enough. Um, cool. I would like to add some vertex color to it as well. So I'm going to isolate the group, I get the, uh, the group node here, select uh, edges, go to edges here and select unsharpen edges. It's going to select all the outside uh, edges for me. I'm going to name this uh, outside edge with the underscore in here. I'm going to get the color. I'm going to select black color. And now the whole mesh is painted. However, I'm just going to isolate this with the outside edge group. And now we have a nice vertex color on the outside edges. I'm going to go back to sweep because I remember I forgot about the UVs. So I'm going to compute UVs and normalize them as well. I'm going to go to UV editor just to confirm that they are actually working. Okay, I have to overwrite any existing UVs. Okay, now I'm thinking maybe do I have to rotate them? So feel free to export them with the rotation that you want. However, I'm just going to carry on with the default. So as you can see, they'll be pointing uh, from the bottom to the top. However, in the game engine, you can just rotate your texture and create like a custom rotator in Unreal Engine to do that. All right, so I think that's it for our swirls. And I think in the last video, we forgot to create a export node. So I'm going to use transform, set the scale to 50, create a null here. I'm going to call this one export. So if I want to swirl, I'm just going to add this one here, space F to uh, view it, as you can see, we're going to export this one. And also what you could do, you could just get another transform, maybe copy it here and put maybe scale of two here. So you can have two different meshes, obviously, because you want two completely different meshes, you can also go to resample and add some uh, few more segments, maybe. So it will be a lot more uh, smooth. And also might be a good idea to actually select completely different uh, loops. OK, so let's uh, go back here. I'm going to copy that group. I'm going to call it loop two, actually loop. I'm going to delete my selection, select again and just going to select completely different uh, loop, enter, and I'm just going to plug it through that group just to see how it looks. And as you can see, we are having a different uh, loop. OK, so it depends how many do you want. I'm just going to go with uh, those two. And that one will have scale of two. So if I'm going to preview both of those now, it goes way outside of the edges of that tornado. Okay, and obviously I can just switch between them. Okay, so that's going to give you options uh, to go with. 
Okay, seems like I actually selected similar. Oh no, actually I've got the different group. Okay, never mind. Uh, let me skip that one. And this one goes to this group, okay. And now let me preview it. Okay, so it might be a good idea to maybe pick a slightly different, uh, completely different loop actually, so you can have a, a variation there, okay. So let me preview it again. So I've got this, uh, this one is here, that one is there. I can't believe it. It seems like I actually picked the same loop. Cool. Let me do it again. I'm going to delete this one. Go to the opposite side. Press the arrow. Select the loop. Enter. Okay, let's try it now. Okay. Perfect. So completely different loop. Obviously, you can play with the twist as well, because maybe you don't need 1000. You can go with 500 and you have a just have a nice variation of that swirl. All right, so that's it for the swirls. Obviously, if you want to uh, export just the swirls, use that one. If you want to export the tornado with the same scale, just drag the tornado node here. And that way you can export either a tornado or swirls. I would export a couple of those uh, just to make sure you have nice variations so you can test them in the engine and see which one's gonna work uh, best for you. Okay, so that was part two and seems like I have to split this into another part. So in the part three, we're just gonna cover a slightly different tool, which will be spiral, because I wanna give you a couple ideas how you can actually approach the swirls. Uh, however, the spiral we're gonna use for the base of the tornado and we're going to look into a couple options that we can create with, the, with that node. All right, so see you in the next one.